Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church in Brainerd, Minnesota. I am Pastor Steve Benson. We are blessed to have you join in worship with us today as we celebrate Holy Trinity Sunday. We worship God how he has revealed himself to us in the Bible. That is, as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We pray that this service will be a blessing for you in your faith journey, and if it is a blessing for you, we encourage you to share this message with others in your family or your friends. A couple of announcements before we begin our service today. Starting tomorrow, Monday, May, or Monday June 8th, the church office hours will be from 8 a.m. until noon, and that will be Monday through Friday, and that will be until further notice. Also starting today, June 7th, we are holding parking lot worship services here at Zion in the parking lot. They will be at 8 a.m. and 9.30, so if you are seeing this before 9.30 or 8 o'clock, please join us today in the parking lot. If you're watching this after that time, you are more than welcome to join us next weekend, June 14th, as we will again hold another parking lot worship service. We continue to hold all of our worship services on Facebook, on YouTube, the church's website, and broadcast on Cash 95.9 FM here in the Brainerd Lakes area. Just to let you know where we are when I made the announcement about the outdoor service today and next week and why aren't we worshiping here in the sanctuary since the government has made some changes in stuff. Well, just to let you know, the leadership of Zion, the Board of Elders, the Church Council, and a special appointed committee is working on the guidelines that have been put out both by the Minnesota state government and also highlighted by our district office. Uh, we're desiring to go slow in this process, mainly because we want to take care of the members of our congregation and our staff. We want to make sure that everybody is safe. One of the things that has been pointed out over and over again is that those people who are 65 years and older and those who have a diminished health situations are encouraged to stay home. Well, if you have ever worshipped with us here at Zion, we have quite a number of people who are 65 years and older who join with us weekly. And our desire is to make sure that we are doing everything within our power to keep all people safe when they come here to worship the Lord. So hopefully by the end of June, we will be worshiping back here in the sanctuary. But until then, we will have an outdoor worship service. The last announcement that I'd like to make before we begin our time in worship today is that if you desire to send a tithe or an offering, you could do that in two different ways. You could mail it here to the church, or you could go to the church's website, zionbrainerd.org, and you can click on the box there that says online giving, and we encourage you to continue to give back to the Lord because all gifts that we have have come from Him. We begin our worship together today by reading together Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants you have established strength because of your foes st to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have put in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet." all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. We sing our opening song today, How Majestic Is Your Name.
O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O Lord, we praise your name. O Lord, we magnify your name. Prince of peace, mighty God, O Lord God Almighty. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O Lord, we praise your name. O Lord, we magnify your name. Prince of peace, mighty God, O Lord God Almighty. We sing together our invocation song in the name of the Father. It's an echo repeat. I will sing a line and I encourage you to sing it back to me. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Spirit. In the name of the Spirit. All three in one. All three in one. Let's use this as our opening prayer. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name the Son. In the name of the Spirit. In the name of the Spirit. All three in one. All three in one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together our first hymn for today, There is a Redeemer. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Jesus, my Redeemer, Name above all names, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, hope for sinners slain. Thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son. And leaving your spirit till the work on earth is done. When I stand in glory, I will see his face. There I'll serve my King forever in that holy place. Thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till 
the work on earth is done. Let us confess our sins to God our Father, pleading that he would not look at us apart from Jesus' blood, but that he would see us through it, granting us forgiveness. Listen to the words of St. Paul from his letter to the Romans, the third chapter, verses 10 through 18. As it is written, none is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God. All have turned aside together. They have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curse and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. In their paths are ruin and misery, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. After hearing St. Paul's words, which clearly state that none is righteous, no, not one, I ask you, do you believe that you are a sinner? If so, say, I believe. Do you believe that the punishment for your sin is eternal separation from God? If so, say, I believe. As John the baptizer came preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, I ask you, do you truly repent of your sins? If so, say, I repent. Do you believe that Christ has come to bring you forgiveness life and salvation? If so, say, I believe. God's love for us is immeasurable. He demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died from us. Christ died for us, from Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Jesus came into our world humble as a child, lived the perfect life that we can't live, and died to pay the price that we couldn't pay. It is this Jesus that we worship here today. It is he who came to take away the sins of the world. In the name of Jesus, your crucified and risen Lord, hear my words as they are truly his words. Your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. We sing together, Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away 
from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and renew a right spirit within me. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse between waters to separate water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it. And it was so. God called the expanse sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land, and gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land, that bear fruit with seeds in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plant-bearing seeds according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from night. Let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years. Let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God let them in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there is evening, and there is morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living and morning thing, with which the water teems according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the water in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, creatures that move along the ground, and wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all of the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth, and to all the birds of the air, and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day... God had finished the work he had been doing, so on the seventh day he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, 
because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. A reading from Acts chapter 2. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God, with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed with the hands, killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Please stand out of respect to the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We sing together our next hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our songs shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherub, 
Abim and Seraphim Falling down before thee Which wert and art and evermore shall be Holy, holy, holy Though the darkness hide thee Though the eyes of sinful men Thy glory may not see Only thou art holy in power, in love and purity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This being Holy Trinity Sunday, the the one Sunday of the church year that is set aside specifically for the purpose to try and understand who God is, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, since the time of Christ People have tried all kinds of different ways to explain who God is, what the Trinity looks like. I'd like to show you a couple of examples of, well, maybe not the best examples of explaining the Trinity. I have a question for you. How many eggs do you see here? I hope you say one. Empty bowl, bowl with eggs, empty bowl. All right, now how many eggs are there? Well, there's still just one egg, but it's broken into three parts. There's the shell, there's the white, there's the yolk. How many eggs? One egg. How many parts? Three parts. Here's another example. All right, check this out. How many ice cubes? If you said one, you are correct. Water comes in different forms, doesn't it? It's an ice cube. Let's see what happens when we warm it up. After warming it up a little bit, it is no longer a solid, an ice, it's a liquid. Now let's see what happens. I'm not sure if you can see it, but as I warm the water up even more, it changes from a liquid into a steam. How many different ice cubes did I have? One. One ice cube that was also a solid, it was liquid, and now it is a gas, steam. Finally, there's one more bowl. This bowl currently has nothing in it, but soon we'll have some ice cream.
and some syrup. And some hard shell. How many bowls of, of ice cream are there? One. One bowl of ice cream. How many components? Three. Can you separate them out? No. So they're one bowl of ice cream with three different parts. Not so good examples of explaining the Trinity. The first one that we watched was what the one I learned when I was a little kid about the egg. One egg, three parts, shell, white, yolk. Doesn't sound wrong. In fact, it's right. Three parts, one egg. So an example of a trinity, yes. An example of the trinity, maybe not so much. It kind of takes God from being God Almighty to being something that's completely understandable. We look at the second one and we see water in all three of its natural forms, in a solid, a liquid, and a gas, from ice to regular tap water to steam. All the same water, H2O, same chemical makeup, but different forms is it an example of a trinity? Yes, definitely an example of a trinity. An example of the trinity? Maybe not so much. Because we can understand what causes the change. We know that at a certain temperature, 32 degrees or under, water will freeze and that it at 210 degrees, water will boil. We know that that water then turns to steam. We understand completely the chemical makeup. We understand how it works. So maybe not such a great example of the Holy Trinity. So the last example was one I came up with yesterday, all on my own. Mainly it was because it was dessert time and I was... And I was desiring ice cream. But as I, as I thought about it, the other ones were starting as one and were separated out. So I thought maybe if we did it the other direction, we started putting each one in individually. First, the vanilla ice cream, which is good all by itself. Then there was the chocolate syrup, the normal chocolate syrup, which is also really good by itself. And then there was the hard shell, which by itself is edible. But when you put the three of them together, every bite has a little bit of each. And when I sat and I tried to separate each one apart from each other, it wasn't easy to do. In fact, I couldn't. I couldn't get all of the chocolate or hard shell off of the ice cream. It was all one. So in my brain, another good example of a trinity, three parts, one dessert, but an example of the holy trinity, again, it brings God into something that makes him more understandable. It makes God to be something that I can almost control. Just like that ice cream, if you noticed, I probably should have only had one scoop. But I was in control. I put more scoops in. I probably only needed a little drizzle of the chocolate syrup, but... I really like chocolate syrup. I was in control of how much chocolate syrup there was. Again, it puts me in control as if somehow I can control 
God as if he does whatever I want him to do. I wish that were the case sometimes, that God would do exactly what I want him to do. Lord, I would like the coronavirus to end right now. Lord, I would desire that the social unrest that is taking place in our country and around the world would stop. That the division between people would no longer exist. Just because I desire it, just because I ask God to do that, does not mean he is going to stop everything that he's doing to make my wish come true. I wish I didn't get the phone call the other day that said a good friend of mine passed away. God, make that not be. But that puts me again as the one who's in control. It puts me again as the one who is in charge of things. It is me again who takes that number one spot. When we look at the first commandment, which simply says, you shall have no other gods. And the God I so frequently worship is me. The one who I want to make happy. The one that I want to get my own way. Me. In our Old Testament reading for today, it says this. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Who was in charge? Not man. Man was a pile of dirt that God formed in love in his image. God created them male and female, different, but with amazing gifts to share with each other. God is the one who does the creating. God is the one who is in charge. God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit is the one who brings and gives life. We have had that so backwards for so long that we expect God to give us what we want. We expect everybody else to do what I want because I am the most important person. No. God is the only one who is truly worthy of worship and praise. God, in his love, saw us after we sinned and sent his son Jesus to suffer and die and rise again. God did that in his love. After Jesus' death and his resurrection, he then ascended into heaven to sit at the right hand of God where he will be the judge he didn't leave us alone. He sent the Holy Spirit to be with us, to give us vision, to breathe into us the breath of life, to fill us with his grace, his love. So often we've had blinders on. So often we are so caught up in our own desires, our own wants, that we lose sight of reality, the truth of God. When God created man in his image, he created man without sin. And then God gave man free will. And what choice did man make but to be disobedient to God? 
man became disobedient to God, and that has tainted the rest of the human existence. Adam and Eve's first two sons, Cain and Abel, you would think that they, being so close to what used to be sinless, might have a couple little sins. But we know that Cain killed Abel because he didn't think that he was getting the respect that was necessary, that he deserved. He killed his brother because he didn't think he was getting what he should be getting, the respect that he should be getting. And since then, division in families, divisions in communities have all continued to be built up Jesus came to tear down walls. Jesus came to bring love and forgiveness. Jesus calls us to be obedient and to repent. To repent of our sins. Our biggest sin, at least in my eyes, in the way that I see it in Scripture, is that we put ourselves in that number one spot. We act as if we deserve something better. As if we are somehow privileged to get something better. The reality goes back to those words from Romans that we read earlier that while we were still sinners, that we all fall short of God's glory, that we all deserve nothing but God's wrath, God's punishment. That's what we deserve. And when we lose sight of that, when we somehow mistakenly assume that we deserve better, that we somehow deserve people to do what I want them to do, I then put myself in the place of God, who in fact God did the opposite of giving us what we deserve. What we deserve is eternal damnation. What we deserve is eternity in hell. What we deserve is separation from a loving God forever. That is what our sin deserves. But in God's love, in God's grace, in God's fatherly heart, God the Father sent his son Jesus to suffer and die in our place Jesus gave us what we don't deserve, a pathway to eternal life, the pathway for forgiveness of sins. Jesus gave us what we don't deserve. And then he sent his spirit. The Holy Spirit came to breathe into us new life, In baptism, we say it is a new beginning, a new birth, and that is what we truly need, is to be made new, to live new, to be changed from our sinfulness, and to be called to righteousness. We are all created in the image of God. We are all created in equal in the eyes of God. And we all deserve the wrath of God. I pray that the Holy Spirit would move in us, that we would stop seeing each other in the eyes of Cain and Abel, but start seeing each other as truly brothers and sisters in Christ. Help us, Lord, to look at each other, and see the image of you in them. 
and stop finding things that will divide us. But help us, Lord, to find the image of you, the thing that ties us all together. Please pray with me. Lord God, Heavenly Father, on this Holy Trinity Sunday, we are reminded again that you alone are God. You alone are truly righteous and just. You alone love completely. So much so that you would send your son to suffer and die and rise again so that we would receive the gift of forgiveness and eternal life. We pray, Lord, that you would move in us through your spirit, that we would be able to be vocal and live love, to live repentance, and to live forgiveness. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we confess our Christian faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you at this time, as we go to the Lord in prayer, I will end each petition with Lord in your mercy, and please say, hear our prayer. O blessed and holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Hear the prayers of your people and grant to us all things according to your word and promise. In the beginning, Father, your word spoke all things into being, and from nothing you made all that is. Help us to see the imprint of your love, your love in the goodness of creation and to exercise responsible care of all that you have entrusted to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Throughout the ages, Father, your spirit filled the sin-stained world with hope and called us to repentance and faith. Help us to hear the voice of your word and to respond with faith, confessing, you without fear before all manner of people and in every corner of the earth as you planned long before the world began deliver us in Christ that we may be your own and live according to your commandments all the days of our lives Lord in your mercy hear our prayer in this day and in this time, Father, raise up for your church godly men to serve as pastors and faithful DCEs, teachers and church workers, and to make known your saving gospel. Raise up faithful men and women who will help your call and serve to the best of their ability wherever you place them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In baptism, you joined us to our Savior's death and resurrection. Father, guide us to be that we may live out faithfully the new lives born of water and the Spirit, serving you with all our bodies, minds, souls, and strength. In the face of disease and death, make us bold to expect that we will be united with him in all the resurrection like his. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In government and law, Father, you work to establish and preserve order, protecting the weak and fostering godly virtue. Bless our president, our governor, and all who administer and judge laws. Deliver the world from the threats of pandemic and tyranny and preserve the nations in peace. Take from us all pride, prejudice, and hate that we may, may not hinder the cause of the gospel by our shame, but give welcome to all people in the name of Christ. 
that we may work from, for the common good of all, that justice may prevail, that life may be protected, truth abound. Bless all who defend our, our nation, our armed forces, especially Maxim, Dan, Sarah, and Ashley. Also bring aid to the emergency and medical fields. We pray that you would be with the police officers the firefighters, the EMTs, all who find themselves in harm's way, Lord, we pray that you would protect them and that you would guide their decisions to be ones of faithfulness and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the hour of trial, in a moment of trouble, you are the Father. Hear us as we cry to you for the sake of the sick, the troubled in mind and wounded in heart, and those who grieve, especially Rachel, Gerald, Opal, Diane, Dorothy, Jay, Patty, Betty, Linda, Betty, Sharon, Sue, Bob, Naomi, Eileen, Galen, Buck, Ron, Vicki, Dale, Diane, Walter, Doug, Patty, Elaine, Trina, Trista, Irene, Nancy, Jana, Linda, Ernie, Kathy, Megan, Gay, and Kim. Deliver them from afflictions as you will and sustain them in hope with a patient heart and the strength for today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the company of the saints, Father, you have shown us that you will not abandon your people, but will keep them in everlasting life. Receive our thanks for those who have gone before us with a sign of faith and now rest from their labors. Especially pray with the family of Doug Flett that you would bring comfort and peace to all of those who knew Doug and that they would continue to share the light that you gave to him to share, that they would bless the world with your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this hour of worship, Father, you serve us with gifts of your grace so that, forgiven, we might know the gift of a clear conscience, and redeemed, we might honor you with all we think, say, and do, Accept the sacrifices of our praise and our tithes and offerings that we bring to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In celebration, Lord God, you have given us life to be lived together. We pray for Rosie, Chad, Regan, Scotty Lynn, Jameson, Dan, Bill, Dwayne, and Marion, who are celebrating birthdays this week as well as Bill and Jan, Jeremy and Kendra, Arnie and Lynn, Chad and Amy, Lou and Barb, Steve and Tracy on their wedding anniversaries. We thank you, Lord, for their lives as they are gifts from you to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know we need, we pray that you grant for us Father, for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, through whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, are all honor and glory that are yours, Almighty Father, both now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We sing our closing benediction. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord bless and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Make his face to shine upon you. May he always be with you. May he always be with and you. And give you peace. And give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.
We sing our closing song, Father, I Adore You. Father, I adore you, lay my life before you, how I love you. Jesus, I adore you, lay my life before you. How I love you. Spirit, I adore you. Lay my life before you. How I love you. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear.